Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Yesterday when we left off on part one of our Flash 2D platform game, um, this is something like what we had. Um, and it presented some problems. So let's take a quick look here. And let's try. One more time. There we go. All right. Now, we've got our character. We can jump our character, move him left and right with the arrows. And he moves along nicely. And we've got all this. Now, here's the problem. We're approaching it. There is more to this level than meets the eye. Um, however, I can't see it. So I just plummeted to my death because I couldn't actually follow the character on the screen. Um, today we're going to add in what's called the VCAM. We already created the layer for it. Um, it's down here. It's bottom layer. Um, but we're going to add in the VCAM and we'll get more of this kind of effect. Now, this is after a little bit of tinkering with my character, customizing him, and of course customizing the ground so that it, uh, it, it looks a little bit more like a, an actual game here. So go into the game mode on this. And now we've got a character that moves along. You can see that his eyeball changes directions. We get the little flames here. And then I've got the jumping. But you'll also notice that now the camera or the character is always dead center in the middle of the screen here. So if I had more layers, and I'll give you a for instance here, the camera will follow my character wherever he goes now. So if I add on more ground, I can actually scroll to that. Um, and it'll just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. In fact, um, let's go ahead and try it out. So we're going to go back to the original here. And now on our VCAM layer, we're going to open up a file. Uh, this file is specific to uh, Mediafire. Mediafire. And um, we've already got the download here for you. And if we go to the VCAM file and we go to download, this is in the link. Um, I'll link that up for you. Go ahead and click on download. It'll put it in your downloads. Then once it's in there, drag it on out of there onto your desktop or wherever you're working on this Flash project. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag it to my desktop here and close this. And now what I'm going to do is from Flash, let's go ahead and hide that. Go back to Flash. No, we don't need the Mac Keeper. Um, leave page. There we go. And go back to our file and we go to open. Okay. Now if we go to our desktop and we find the VCAM file that we just downloaded, we open that up. It's going to open up a new tab here. Now on the second layer, on the first frame, I'm just going to go ahead with the pointer tool. I'm just going to click anywhere on the VCAM and I'm going to copy this. So go ahead and command C it. And now I'm going to go back to my previous one. I'm going to go down to the VCAM layer click on the first frame and then I'm going to paste that in. Now you can tell because of our document size and settings here that things are a little bit different. So we're going to have to resize this. So I go ahead and bring this up and you can leave a little bit of a border here around here because the main thing is is that it centers in on your character. And I'm going to go to free transform. And with free transform, we're going to go ahead and drag this thing out here. And I don't need it to be that big, so we'll bring this in a little bit and bring that down, and there we go. All right, we're all set up with the VCAM. Now, a couple problems. Obviously, the VCAM is pre-made. It's got some stuff on it that I don't necessarily need, uh, so we're going to get rid of that. Um, on the VCAM layer, I'm going to go ahead and double-click on the VCAM with my pointer tool here and double click on it and you'll see that I'm now in scene one VCAM AS2. Okay, in this layer what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to customize out some of that stuff that I don't need. So for instance, the uh, all the colors here, I can highlight these, delete those out of there, get rid of that color gradient. Um, I don't need the uh, I don't need the target thing in the middle so I double click on that, get rid of that and we are pretty well all set here. Now there are a few actions that go along with the cam or with the VCAM. So what I want to do is add those on here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down to, let's go back to scene one. And I go to VCAM, which is already on here. And in the instance name area, I type in V, lowercase, C-A-M, all lowercase. And that's the instance name that will refer back to the code. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some basic actions on here. So I right click on it and I go to actions and then from the description I've got some VCAM code that you'll want to paste in so I go command V 
And if I don't have that, I am going to go back to my original source, which good time to plug this. Again, Flash Game Development Tutorials, they created the coding for this. I want to give them credit. Only reason I'm recreating this is simply because there was no audio. Um, and my students, my students tend to prefer audio. So let's go ahead, minimize that. And we'll try this again. We'll go back and right click on this and bring up our actions. And let's go ahead and command V that code in there. All right, now let's go ahead and test this and see how we're doing so far. Um, again, you can go up to control, test, movie, and test, or you can just hit command enter. Okay, and wow, look at that. It snaps right over there. Now you can see the difference here kind of scrolls along and it makes it more like a traditional platform game where I can't see everything that's going on. Now here is that impossible jump that I still can't make so I'll have to um, modify my ground layer so I can actually get to that or I will have to change the gravity settings that is more to come here in the future tutorials. Okay, But now what we've got is we've got a situation where we can create the layout of our platform game and actually start going through some of the game flow to see how everything moves and test it out while always staying centered on the red ball in the middle. Okay, I still have problems, of course, with this, which will be the future parts that come up. That would be one, if I fall off, it, the camera follows it forever and ever, but um, you know, it still doesn't restart the game. So I'm gonna have to set up a respawn point and a, a box that resets it to the beginning. Before we go to that though, let's go ahead and customize our VCAM a little bit. Um, so I can go back into my VCAM layer and I'm going to uh, double click on that. So again, it says scene one, VCAM AS2 at the top. And then in here, what I can do just to begin with, give you an idea, but of course you could do this with pictures as well, is I'm just going to drop in a, a solid color. Okay, so I'm going to grab this yellow color that's obnoxious. Okay. And I don't need the stroke weight. I'm going to put it to the same exact color. And then we're going to grab just the rectangle tool here. And around the VCAM area, you can do it for the whole workspace if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and draw this really big square here. And uh, let's try that again. I was holding shift while I do that. And I don't need to do that. There we go. Now, if I go back to scene one, boom, I got a background. But if we go ahead and hit command enter to play or test this out, it's still not showing up here, okay? So to remedy that situation, we actually have to go in and eliminate a bit of code um, that will allow us to do that. So if I go into the VCAM layer again, so I'll grab my pointer tool, double click on the VCAM. Once in here, I'll go to the actions frame here in the VCAM area or in the VCAM timeline, and I'm gonna go to actions. And that brings up all this lovely coding. Now, if we scroll down a little bit here, there are some things that are keeping my background from actually showing up. The first one right here is line 20. It says visible faults. Okay, that's not, um, it's not permitting my background to show up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that out of there. Okay, and I'm going to close up that bit of coding, go back to scene one, and it all looks good here. We're going to hit command enter. And boom, now I've got a background that's actually showing up, a character that actually moves, and I'm all set to start customizing the layout of my level. Okay, so go ahead um, today, add on the VCAM, um, download that file, paste the code into the description, take out that line 20, and then start uh, customizing the ground layer to uh, make it work. So if I want to ever go back to the ground layer to kind of clean this up, basically I just go back to the ground layer here, and you can see it's all one movie clip. I go into it, and now the one that was problematic is this. I go ahead and take that, and let's go ahead and bump that down a little bit so I can actually make that jump. Okay, So it's a lot of trial and error here to get this to work right um, so that uh, we can actually move where we want to. Use your guidelines, too, to kind of line things up if you need to. Okay, So after I make that change, I go back to Scene 1, hit Command Enter, and now I'm in the game, and I go ahead and play along, testing it out, making that jump. All right, we're good there. Ugh, still not making that jump. All right, let's reset it again. That could have been player error because I stink. All right, and boom, 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 and boom, and oh, not quite. Won't go through, so I got to lower that down a little bit more. Tomorrow we'll talk about a couple other settings um, that will help you customize this a little bit more with the ground and everything, and we'll start adding in a few of the details that'll be in here. Um, thanks again for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media, 
and uh, join us again for our third part of this tutorial. <laughs>